The New York Jets going into week number three. Last week was an absolute horrendous appearance right now for the great young quarterback of Zach Wilson's stature. Now, a lot of Jet fans can sit back and say, well, Sam Darnold wasn't the guy, and we needed a guy that was going to fill in the spot, was going to be the guy moving forward for this organization. The personality traits of Sam Darnold doesn't work in New York. Well, it's working in North Carolina. That's for damn sure. And I will say this. Sam Darnold is 3-0 and right now, and the New York Jets are 0-2. So I know a lot of Jet fans are sitting back and saying that they needed Zach Wilson. They wanted Zach Wilson. Sam Darnold was a waste of goods or whatever they want to call it. Sam Darnold right now is showing you why he was a top three pick a couple of years ago in the draft. You look at the New York Jets. When you talk about this team and you talk about this organization, Joe Douglas, I love Joe Douglas. I think he's a very intelligent man. I believe his last two drafts have been really good, even though his draft stock has not really shown to be very good. Now, I know Jet fans are sitting back and saying Zach Wilson is the guy, and they believe in this guy. And he threw four interceptions in Week 2 against New England Patriots, which we predicted probably was going to happen. Joe Douglas is a guy that a lot of people trusted to build this team and work on this team and turn this team into a winner. And they brought in Robert Sala. They brought in Mike LaFleur from a winning organization like the San Francisco 49ers. And you would expect that this team was going to move forward this year. Now, I understand it's a rookie season with a rookie coach, a rookie offensive coordinator, a rookie uh, quarterback. So you would think that this New York Jet team was going to still have these weeks that you're going to shake your head, you're going to itch your head, and you're going to wonder when this team is going to turn this thing around. But the last two weeks, especially last week against the New England Patriots, you want to have a decent showing against Bill Belichick and that Patriots defense. Throwing four interceptions in your second game, to me, was horrible. Now, again, he's a rookie. He's hopefully going to figure things out. He's going to watch a video, and he's going to go in there and watch film, and and that's what he needs to do. He needs to figure out what he did wrong so he doesn't do it again. So we have seen this over and over again with Jets quarterbacks. They go back week after, and they do the same thing. We've seen this with Sam Donald. We saw this with Mark Sanchez. We saw this with Geno Smith. So I want to see this week, this coming week, against a very good defense in Denver where the New York Jets and Zach Wilson make a good showing. They don't have to win the game. And right now the Denver Broncos are fighting and, and playing on all cylinders. Eddie Bridgewater is playing great football. Their defense, even though Chubb might be out for a significant amount of time, Von Miller is back. This defense is a lot better than it was last year. But I will say this. Zach Wilson's going to need to have a stronger showing. He's going to have to throw more touchdowns. And he's got to go out there and play the game speedy. Yeah, Zach Wilson, I think the bigger problem was there was a lot of interceptions that were more bad throws, forcing the throws. It wasn't like it was something where, all right, he tried a tight window and it got deflected or got picked off. He was throwing them really, really badly. Two of them, especially deep down the field, were very badly. Very Jameis Winston-esque. And that's the bigger problem, I think, when it comes to Zach Wilson. Now, I'm good with the coaching staff saying, all right, be aggressive. Don't just do everything conservatively like we see the Patriots have done with Mac Jones so far. Now, obviously, the Patriots and Jets are in different circumstances. The Patriots are expected to contend this year, whereas the Jets are kind of in a transitional year. And and the Jets, again, their game plan was very good besides of what Zach Wilson was. They ran the ball pretty efficiently. All their running backs over four yards a carry. And their defense played very well in that game, only allowing 25 points despite having all these short fields. Mac Jones only had 186 yards. The running game barely got going for the Patriots. And for Zach Wilson, he just has to clean up those longer throws and those tougher throws that he normally made in college. And I think... That's going to be the next step of the progression for him. And also mentally. Wherever is he mentally after this kind of game? You mentioned Bill Belichick kind of getting in these young quarterbacks' heads. How will he transition against the Broncos against... Obviously not to the level of Belichick, but a very smart guy in Vic Fangio, too, who's a good defensive mind. So that's going to be the next step. Now, the reason I do like the Zach Wilson to bounce back is, one, he played at BYU, so he's played well in the altitude in the past, which in Denver, he'll be more used to it than a lot of other quarterbacks. And also, these receivers starting to come back now, too. Jamison Crowder, Keelan Cole were out again. Obviously, we'll get into Denzel Mims in a bit with what's going on with him. But they're going to get a little more receiving depth, too, which could help against outside of the top 
two corners for Denver, which are very good, a secondary that doesn't have as much depth. So I think they could take advantage of that. And Denzel Mims needs to play in this game. I don't care what the Jets have to do. I don't want to hear it from Mike LaFleur that he's not ready to play because he doesn't know all the positions. I have seen this over and over again. Julio Jones is a vertical wide receiver. He has been a successful vertical wide receiver for how many years? He is a Hall of Famer. Now, I'm not saying Denzel Mims is Julio Jones. I'm not saying Denzel Mims is Tyreek Hill. Okay, but what I am saying is he's a long six foot three wide receiver that has unbelievable vertical leap and he can run a four three. How many six foot three wide receivers can run a four three straight down the field? Now, I have watched this team play the last two weeks, and Elijah Moore had no preseason. Elijah Vera Tucker had no preseason. All these players, and I don't understand Robert Sala. I don't understand Mike LaFleur. I don't understand Joe Douglas. These guys not having a preseason really affects where this team is going to go early in the season. Now, I know they're fighting injuries. Denzel Mims, for the last two years, since he was a rookie, had the hamstring problem, both had double hamstring problems when he came into the league last year. Then he didn't play until week six, week seven, so he really didn't get his feet wet until the ninth or tenth week. And then, obviously, Elijah Moore, we haven't seen enough of Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore's been on the field, but he hasn't touched the ball. And everybody was saying, well, watch this kid. This kid's going to be a breakout wide receiver. This guy's the best wide receiver in this class. Really? I have not seen anything with Elijah Moore. How many catches does Elijah Moore have in the first two weeks? And to me, if you're not getting the best players on the field the ball, there's a huge problem. And Corey Davis, I like Corey Davis. He's a good number two. I'm so sick and tired of hearing everybody say that he's a number one. He's not a number one. He is a a Mari Cooper type of player. He's a great number two. But he's not a number one. So he thinks he's a number one. The Jets think he's number one. But here's the thing. Have the Jets ever been right about a wide receiver? Ever. Never. Santonio Holmes, Brantley Edwards. These guys were the best wide receivers they had. And Were they any good? Were they at top of the league? No. The only one that was at top of the league for one year was Brendan Marshall. Right. I mean, seriously. So I don't trust the Jets on talent. When it comes to the wide receiving core, they're good at finding defensive players. They've always been good at finding that. Except for edge rushers. That's it. They find corners. They find linebackers. But they can't find any edge rushers. They can't find, obviously, the offensive firepower that they need to win. It's interesting, too, because I think Elijah Moore is somebody that his role is going to definitely be more well-known in this offense later on because he's so versatile in what he can do. And I think this is a matchup that against the Broncos who are trying to avoid these top two corners that maybe this is the one that he could break out for. Jamison Crowder is still not sure if he's going to play, so it's obviously going to be Elijah Moore's slot role unless they move somebody else involved. And I think that could be something they could expose game plan-wise. In terms of Denzel Mims, I agree with you. He definitely has to play at some point. Even if he doesn't have the full-on development with the offense, and I worried about that about a month ago when I was saying how the 49ers offense didn't really rely on the big body receivers. You still need a presence of it for a game plan purpose. It's not like Denzel Mims is getting stuffed down on the depth chart and other guys are going off. Corey Davis is having a great year. Elijah Moore is having this rookie sensation type year. It's not happening for them. The Jets offense has still been anemic with the wide receivers and the offensive line too, but Denzel Mims at least brings another type of presence to game plan for, even if he doesn't know the offense in full. All right, maybe just have him out there on simple routes. Maybe have Elijah Moore do the more complex routes or Keelan Cole when he comes back do the more complex routes until Mims gets to that get him in the lineup at least it's still crazy that they're not trusting him he gives you a different dimension on the field and that's what they need that's something that the Jets have been not really providing now obviously Corey Davis he's six foot two 230 pounds he's he's a big guy on the field well if you brought Corey Davis and Denzel Mims is the same size same everything why isn't Denzel Mims not playing you have two six foot two, six foot three guys on the field. You have Elijah Moore and Jamison Crowder. You have weapons that you can get the ball. You have four reliable wide receivers that are fast, long, lengthy, and can catch the ball. Why isn't Denzel Mims not playing? It doesn't make any sense. At least also from a mental standpoint, you can at least get him in the game, get him targets to get his confidence back too. Maybe even have the running backs run the tougher routes, run the deep routes, and get Denzel Mims open underneath to at least get his confidence going too. Because I'm sure mentally he wants to play, and I'm sure it's getting to him that these guys don't trust him. This new coaching staff doesn't trust him. And he knows- Wouldn't it bother you if your own coaching staff 
that you obviously were introduced to and they loved you when they came in. Robert Sala spoke highly regard of you in the preseason saying that you're growing as a wide receiver and then all of a sudden the season starts and you're not even playing. Right. And I think for a guy that was very talented coming out of the draft, could have been a first round pick very easily. Should have been. Yeah. I think that's something that the Jets still have to look at when it comes to the upside of the player. Now the scheme obviously is going to be the scheme, but when it's not working, you have to alter it in some ways. And again, the 49ers didn't rely on a lot of big body targets. They relied on the tight ends more than the big body receivers. And the Jets structure is a little different. Maybe that's something that Mike LaFleur is still adjusting to. But the best way to adjust to that is to get your big bodied receiver some reps, get him some targets, even have him try some elaborate routes. If it's a third down in 14 or something, let him try on that play. It's a low percentage play anyway. Let him at least try to grow in that regard rather than having just have him stuffed down the death chart for Jeff Smith. Oh, my God. Jeff Smith. No offense to Jeff Smith. He wouldn't be playing on another NFL team if he wasn't playing for the New York Jets. I don't want to hear it from Mike LaFleur or Robert Sala that these guys have been practicing harder than Denzel Mims. I don't give a crap. When this guy is six foot three, runs a four three, long as hell, and can go down the field and go out there and grab an intercepting ball from somebody else trying to grab a ball. And let's be honest, last week, the way Zach Wilson was throwing the ball, having Denzel Mims on the field doesn't hurt because he's a guy that can go up and catch the ball. He's long and he has a very good vertical leap. So there should be no reason why he's not on the field. 